Shadowheart reaches a major milestone in Baldur's Gate 3 upon completing the Chosen of Shar quest. This involves an important choice, which can lead to various rewards, including the legendary Shar's Spear of Evening and a full set of Dark Justice ER armor, all of which will be covered in this guide. As usual, useful timestamps can be found in the video description, and I want to give a quick warning that, while I'll do my best to avoid spoilers, there are going to be some in the form of important information. To start, you'll probably want Shadowheart in your party at least some of the time to build up a good relationship. I don't know if it's necessary, but my relationship level was basically maxed out with Shadowheart by the time we reached the end of this quest. Generally speaking, Shadowheart will approve of dialogue choices that involve distrust of evil, such as devils, being supportive of her goals and motivations, and kindness towards children and the less fortunate, while also not being a pushover. In addition to raising your relationship with Shadowheart, I highly encourage thoroughly exploring the various areas we will be traveling through. There are tons of interesting encounters and powerful magic items to be uncovered. You'll also be leveling up through exploration, which may prove necessary for some of the later encounters along this questline. With that out of the way, let's talk about the major locations we'll need to traverse in order to complete the Chosen of Shar quest. First, we'll need to find our way to the Underdark. Starting from the coastal region, there are multiple ways you can reach the Underdark, but one way is through the Goblin Camp. Enter the Defiled Sanctum and head to one of the Western Rooms. You can sneak and jump to reach this location without turning any of the goblins hostile. As a quick tip, if you lack any capable lockpickers and mainly rely on finding keys to match any locks, you can hold the ALT button on the keyboard to highlight most loose items and interactables in the surrounding area, including keys. The corresponding input on controller appears to be the right stick click. Getting back on track, go through the door into the Defiled Temple, then make your way to a puzzle room. You'll need to spin the stone discs on the ground so that all of the black circles are on the bottom disc, as shown here. This will open a secret passageway to a Selenite outpost within the Underdark. From there, you can either destroy the crystal protecting the outpost and head out the front gate, or you can sneak out the broken window on the west side. No matter which you choose, each of these routes has unavoidable risks, so make sure to save often. In any case, once you've explored the Underdark to your satisfaction, head over to the Underdark beach location. There, you'll meet some Dwargar. Regardless of how you handle them, you should be able to take the docked boat across the lake to reach the Grimforge. Again, this is a fairly big area with hours of content, so explore to your heart's content. Once you are ready, go to the elevator that is just east of the Grimforge fast travel point. This will take you to the Shadow Cursed Lands, where the Moonrise Towers can be found. For the purposes of this guide, we'll actually need to go to the Grand Mausoleum, but before doing this, a way to fend off the Shadow Curse must be obtained. Early on in your exploration of the ruined battlefield, you should encounter several Harpers, and they can direct you to the Last Light Inn. There, I made nice with the leadership of the inn and allied myself with Isabel, though I can't say whether this is absolutely necessary. After a major event that followed, I was able to find a group of Harpers and lead an ambush on a convoy. Completing the ambush allowed me to obtain a functioning Moon Lantern. This lantern provides protection from the Shadow Curse in all forms. However, you can also inspect the lantern and release the Pixie within. This should get you the Filigreed Feywild Bell, which can be used to get the Pixie's Blessing for all party members. Said Blessing will also protect you from the Shadow Curse's effects. With that in hand, we can now venture to the Gauntlet of Shar. Make your way to Wreathwind Town first, then head northwest to the Grand Mausoleum. The northernmost chamber of the mausoleum is full of traps, so watch your step. It also contains a puzzle that we will need to solve. 
there are three portraits, each with a button beneath. To proceed, interact with the button underneath the Moonrise Towers portrait first. Follow this by interacting with the button under the Grief portrait, and finally interact with the button under the General portrait. Doing this in the correct order will open a secret chamber to the north with a traversal gem. Interacting with the gem will then take you to the Gauntlet of Shar. Make sure to save before entering the first chamber as it's filled to the brim with dangerous traps. To proceed, you'll need to navigate around the traps to each corner of the chamber. In each corner, you'll find a lever that lowers a corresponding pair of lanterns. Once all of the lanterns have been lowered, which requires pulling a total of four different levers, you should be able to interact with the umbral gem at the center of the room. This will remove the magical barrier from the circular door to the north. There is also a secret side path you can take by jumping along some mushrooms down the west passage. Just watch out as this comes with its own dangers. As it turns out, there is a meddling necromancer within the Gauntlet of Shar. The secret side path will basically take you right to him. But if you opt instead for the main path, the one through the circular stone door, you can find the necromancer by heading west, past the gauntlet of Shar fast travel point. I chose to bide my time when it came to the necromancer, playing nice for the moment. You can do the same, but he will eventually need to be dealt with for the purposes of this guide. However you choose to play it, the next important step will be to collect the four umbral gems, which will allow us to access the inner sanctum of Shar's gauntlet. For the first umbral gem, head east of the fast travel point past the pedestal of reckoning. A neutral displacer beast will stay in sight, but just out of reach, as it moves deeper into this dilapidated area of the temple. If you chase the beast down the stairs to the north, you'll fall victim to an elaborate and deadly ambush albeit one that comes with interesting story elements tied to it, and which you might just be able to talk your way out of peacefully. Alternatively, you can jump across a gap to the east and go up a short staircase, sneaking up on and ambushing the ambushers. This approach can be combined with a potion of speed and the spirit guardian spell on Shadowheart to make quick work of the would-be ambushers. In any case, once the encounter is cleared, pick up the umbral gem. It can be found below and to the east of the ambushers, resting on the floor near a morbid bed. Next up, return to the Gauntlet of Shar fast travel point and head directly north down a staircase. There are three trials that will need to be completed. Through the first set of doors on the west side of the hall is the Soft Step Trial. As a bonus tip, you can improve your relationship with Shadowheart at each one of these trials. To do it, interact with the Sacrificial Bowl on your primary character, then allow Shadowheart to take over and complete the trial herself. Shadowheart will approve each time you do this. I found the Soft Step trial is most easily done in turn-based mode and with the help of an invisibility spell. All you have to do is make your way to the west side of the chamber without being detected by the Roaming Shadows. About halfway through, there is a lever you can pull to access a chamber containing a key to the final chamber, but the associated lock is fairly easy to pick, with a DC of just 10.
Once you've made it to the final chamber, grab the Umbral Gem, then use the Umbral Transporter to return to the Trial's entrance. Head further north down the main hall and enter the self-same trial through the next pair of doors on the west side. For each party member that is in the entry chamber when the trial is started, there will be a doppelganger waiting in ambush within the arena to the west. Because of this, it's easiest to go with just Shadowheart, or perhaps Shadowheart and your primary character. The doppelgangers are vulnerable to radiant damage, and the last one will drop an Umbral Gem when defeated. Pick it up, then use the Umbral Transporter to return to the trial's entrance. You can find the entrance to the Faith Leap Trial down the curved set of stairs to the north. For this trial, you'll need to make your way across a path that turns invisible when approached by any character. I'd say jumping is the best way to approach this trial and you'll need to carefully plan out your jumps in advance to avoid falling. You can also use a fly spell or potion of flying to make crossing the trial much easier, though you will still need to make sure that you're landing on solid ground. Once you've crossed the trial, grab the final Umbral Gem and use the Transporter to return to the start of it. There is one last step before we can move on to the Inner Sanctum, retrieving the Dark Justiciar armor set and the Spear of Night. A short distance south of the Faith Leap Trial entrance, you'll find the entrance to the Silent Library. You can remove the silence spell that encompasses the room by defeating the librarian enemy. We'll need to clear the room of enemies, then solve a puzzle. First, go to the bookshelves in the northeast corner of the room. They're trapped, so do your best to disarm the left bookshelf, then grab the Teachings of Loss the Night Singer book from it. The button that's northwest from the library center will open the nearby portcullis. Interact with the central pedestal there and insert the Night Singer book to unlock a secret chamber to the west. You'll find the Spear of Night and Dark Justiciar Half Plate up in center. Be sure to also grab the Dark Justiciar Helmet out of the chest near the back of the room. Make sure that Shadowheart has the Spear of Night in her inventory, then fast travel back to the Gauntlet of Shar and make your way over to the Pedestal of Reckoning.
Place an umbral gem into the ancient altar to activate the traversal platform. Then ride the platform down to the inner sanctum's entrance. Insert the remaining three umbral gems into the new ancient altar to access the inner sanctum where the entrance to the Shadowfell is waiting. As the on-screen prompt suggests, proceeding past this point can dramatically alter the state of this region and close off certain quests. So I highly recommend exploring the Shadow Cursed region as much as possible before moving on. If you haven't already killed Balthazar the Necromancer, he'll meet you in the Shadowfell. You'll get long distance jumping here, so you can make your way down to the central platform of Night Song's prison. There, an encounter will commence with Balthazar. You can choose how to deal with Balthazar, but in order to fulfill Shadowheart's quest, we will need to get rid of him. You may be able to intimidate or persuade Balthazar to run off, but personally, I took the combat route. If you do the same, you can select a party member that is not speaking with Balthazar to prepare for and sort of cheese this fight. Being a necromancer, Balthazar will animate the bones of all the surrounding skeletons to fight at his side. Before the fight begins, you can gather and move the scattered bone piles so that they are all grouped up. An elixir of vigilance will give any character that drinks it an extremely high chance of going first in combat. I recommend one with area of effect spells or abilities, preferably those that deal radiant damage. You can then use a potion of speed on that character to gain two actions per turn, and use AoE spells to clear most of Balthazar's support. Once you've gotten rid of Balthazar, all that remains is a final choice, and so you will probably want to save the game. Double check and make sure Shadowheart has the Spear of Night in her inventory as it's required for one of the outcomes. Then interact with Nightsong. I had a near max relationship level with Shadowheart and so that may have affected the outcome, but here is how my dialogue choices ultimately influenced events. Trusting Shadowheart and not interfering resulted in Shadowheart's approval, but the decision could go either way from there. At that point, there were three dialogue choices. The first, kill her, let's finish this ritual, resulted in Shadowheart killing Nightsong. The remaining two choices resulted in Shadowheart sparing Nightsong. Now here is the important part. Whether Shadowheart kills or spares Nightsong has both immediate and far-reaching consequences, the latter of which may not be apparent until many hours further into the game. I'll speak on what I know, which is the immediate consequences, and this will include spoilers. If Shadowheart kills Nightsong, she will become a Dark Justiciar of Shar, and will be rewarded with multiple powerful magic items. And just to be clear, this is the only way you can get the following rewards. The Spear of Night will be transformed into the legendary Shar Spear of Evening. The Dark Justiciar Halfplate will be upgraded from rare to very rare quality, and you will also get Dark Justiciar gloves and boots. When combined, this set of items grants multiple powerful spells to be cast at will without limit. This includes Darkness, a level 2 spell, Shadow Teleportation, and Beckoning Darkness. The set also grants buffs that will make the wearer much more capable when fighting in darkness. The big one is Immunity to Blindness, but you'll also get easier criticals in Darkness with the Dark Justiciar Helmet. That being said, all of this appears to come at a great cost. For one, the protection at Last Light Inn will fall and everyone there will be turned into Shadow Cursed Undead. This can include NPCs that play important roles in the quests of other Origin characters, such as Daemon, the NPC that works on Karlak's Infernal Engine. In addition, it is probably the more tragic path for Shadowheart to take as far as her story goes, although that is mostly speculation. Now let's talk about the alternative in which Shadowheart spares Nightsong. The immediate rewards are not nearly as enticing. 
you will actually lose the Spear of Night, and the only reward you will get is the Moonlight Glaive, which is a rare magic item. You will not get the Dark Justiciar Gloves, Boots, or Upgraded Half Plate if you forsake Char, but you will get to keep the Dark Justiciar Helmet and rare variant of the Half Plate. In addition, Last Light Inn will remain safe and protected against the Shadow Curse. Nightsong also seems to know about Shadowheart's true past and is possibly the best lead to uncover what actually happened to Shadowheart before her memory was erased by Char. This may ultimately prove to be the better and more fulfilling path for Shadowheart to take, which may be worth the price of incurring the wrath of Char and losing access to her powerful magic items. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me in the comments where I'll do my best to help. If you want to see more great guides, you can head over to my channel. And if you're new, consider subscribing. You're helping me feed my cat. Her name's Marshmallow. Have a great day. If you're here today, have a great Monday and a great week. And as always, thanks for watching.